Cheers from Japan. Tokyo Toy Bastard here with my kids. Yeah, I have kids. So this is my daughter Lydia and my son Lyoto. And they are also big fans of Dr. Slump and especially Arale Chan. Do you guys like Arale Chan? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because it's funny. It's and strong. Funny and funny and strong. Funny and strong? And cute. And cute? Is she stronger than Goku? Yeah. Really? Uh -huh. How do you know? Because in Dragon Ball, Super. Goku and Arale fight. And who Super. wins? Arale. See, they know their stuff. All right, guys. As you can see, they have their own collection. Um, big fans, also big Dragon Ball fans. But yeah, I want to start the video off with them. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you for showing your stuff. Bye bye. bye. See you later. And it's time for Daddy to show his really old, dusty stuff. <laughs> See you guys in a little bye bit. Bye. See ya. Adios. Shut the door, please. Thank you. All right, so a bit of history about uh, Dr. Slump. So Dr. Slump was a manga series created by Akira Toriyama uh, that was originally published in 1980 through Shonen Jump, the same publication that published Dragon Ball. And it came out five years prior to Dragon Ball. And this was the first manga that made him super successful, made him a millionaire in Japan. Well, you know, in yen, you know, a millionaire in dollars, probably a, you know, billionaire in yen. Trillionaire and yen? Anyway, um, so uh, I'm going to start off just showing you some early examples of the Tankobon, the uh, collected issues of a rally. Uh, so here I've got, uh, those are the reissues. Um, here I've got a hardcover of the very first edition, and I've got some of the later editions. I really love the cover on this one where she's like full out, you know, kung fu gear, and you've got like a prototype Shinron right there. And uh, yeah, black white manga. It was very uh, gag oriented, a lot more funny and weird and random, similar to Dragon Ball, but without more. It didn't really have a cohesive plot. It just it was more like Looney Tunes. Um, and a lot of pop culture references. So like, there's a character called Superman, which is basically uh, Superman, but he's got a puckered face because supa means supai means sour. Just weird stuff like that. Recurring characters are uh, also pop culture um, icons in Japan, like Godzilla, Gamera, Ultraman appear often throughout Doctor Slump. Um, you see plays in Star Wars, etc., etc. But anyway, the main central character is Arale Chan, who is a robot created by uh, Doctor Senbei, who is also known as Doctor Slump, and. Um, they go on crazy adventures together. So I have amassed a small collection of vintage Arale items and some Dr. Slump stuff that um, I found here in Japan. And it's not a huge collection. I've had even had some things that I've uh, fixed up and traded off to get some other things that I needed. So some things that I posted on Instagram or some of you may have seen in some posts that I made on my other social media accounts some of it may not be in my current collection, but here's what I've got. So I've only been collecting Arale for our Dr. Slump stuff for about a year. Um, growing up in Kentucky and knowing Dragon Ball in high school, I had no idea what uh, Dr. Slump was. It was never published in English. As far as I knew, there was a, a dub, a random English dub that I never knew of until uh, like a year ago. So. My introduction uh, to Arale was when the first time I came to Japan in 2003, um, I had some friends that showed me some of the manga and they knew I was into Dragon Ball. So they showed me the manga and I thought it was really funny and I liked the gag manga style. But um, up until last year, I wasn't super interested in it. And then all of a sudden, uh, Arale appeared on Dragon Ball Super and that reignited my interest. So I went back and read a lot of the manga. I ordered some DVDs, watched them with my kids. They instantly fell in love with her. Um, one release that if you live in the United States or outside of Japan that you can get with English subtitles is this, uh, for a decent price, is this, is this collection of the original 1980s uh, Dr. Slump movies. Um, you can find this on eBay uh, and it's officially released and it's got five movies and it's totally worth like the $20 price tag. So five theatrical movies in this, you can find this. Otherwise, you're pretty much shit out of luck if you want to find it on... Uh, if you want to find the TV series with English dub, 
uh, in the U.S. Uh, there are other countries that released it in Spanish and Italian and uh, other a Asian languages. But yeah, uh, good luck trying to find some. And the Japanese releases are extremely, insanely expensive. So one of the uh, very first things I ever bought was last year at a flea market. Um, and I saw this. It was pretty cheap. And I had to have it. And this is what started me collecting uh, Arale stuff. So it was this little swinging Arale figure, uh, officially licensed by Toei, as you can see. And uh, it's got Arale um, kind of in a Superman pose with, a, I think, a cape and her uh, trademark hat and glasses. Although the hat just has an A rather than saying Arale. And if you push the sides, uh, she swings. And this was a gimmick toy. There are other characters like Godzilla and other things that were sold like this. So they basically just stuck the figure inside. But yeah, I picked this up and that started my quest for more Arale stuff about a year ago. And then shortly after, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Mandarake. I shop there all the time, especially the Nakano location. And then um, I started to notice that they were putting out these auction guides uh, Mandarake puts out these auction guides that shows what they're going to be auctioning off um, and lets you know what the base prices are. And I looked at this one and I saw it was like, oh, it was like 10 toy buses. I'm not interested in that. And then I looked in the back and it was Dragon Ball. So I was like, oh, what's in here? Well, there's a ton of Dragon Ball stuff in here. But since this video is about Dr. Slump and Arale, we're going to show you. They also had uh, all, all these sorts of random vintage... Uh, Dr. Slump items, a lot of toys. Uh, one toy that I had in my collection that I don't have anymore is this one. The Super Alloy Arale. She's made out of die cast, and if you push a button on her stomach, she raises her hand up. But um, she does kind of a salute, if you might. I want this version with this hat, but yeah, I had this one, but I was missing the, this set, and I wanted the box, so I'm holding out for this one. Um, yeah, anyway, there's a lot of stuff in here. So this was my base for finding out what was existing in the world of Dr. Slump and the prices that I would probably be looking at because these all have prices below them. I know you probably can't see them on my camera, but they've got base prices. So I had an idea of what was out there, how much I'd probably have to pay. And uh, so and then I set off on my quest. So. Uh, one of the very first things I started to collect, and I'm already a big collector of, was the Keshi, the mini figures, the mini eraser figures, Keshi Goma. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, you, and I haven't really talked about it on YouTube or my blog, but I'm a huge Dragon Ball Keshi collector. I also collect a lot of Godzilla Keshi, and I have just fuck tons of Keshi at my house. Jars and jars and shelves full of them. So here's a jar of Keshi. Uh, more colorful Keshi and anything that's pink in there is from Dr. Slump. Everything else is from Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. That's just one container I have and uh, but yeah I'm not gonna dig all those out but there's some cool stuff in there but I tend to like the pink Dr. Slump Keshi. So let's start off here with um, some pink Dr. Ke uh, pink Dr. Slump uh, Keshi uh, specifically of Arale. So I think this was a keychain charm of some sort and it's more of a, a slightly bigger size Keshi. So it's a Raleigh with her hat. Um, also, not the greatest lighting, so sorry, that's hard to see. Um, and then here's a smaller size one. She's got the same kind of attire going. Yeah. Actually, let me uh, see if I can fix the lighting a bit here. No jump cuts for you. This might help. Nope, that didn't help. Again, no jump cuts for you. It's all... It's all real, baby. Think of it as a live stream. Just pretend it's a live stream, but it's not live. It's live for me. Oop, anything could happen. My kids could walk through the door, like, naked and be like, Daddy, make me a sandwich. That'd be weird. Okay, let me try that again. I put another light source here. Uh, so here are the two that I just showed. Oh yeah, that's much better. Still not perfect, but better. And here are a few others in pink, 
blue and green. And this has also got uh, Dr. Sembe. Here's some more of my Keshi. Okay. And then um, during my Keshi hunts, I found this little gem. I probably has a cat. And I uh, thought it was cute. And then later I found out that she was missing a tail. She's got a big hole where her tail should be. And I found out that the version with the tail goes for like 80 bucks. That's pretty expensive for a Keshi. And then sooner or later, I ended up finding an even rarer painted one with the tail intact. And a little bit dusty. And then I found another painted one, her in a bathing suit. And then I found another painted one of her with a pilot's hat. And these are all great. And they all came in uh, they all came in these little baggies with header cards and the official toy uh, stickers. There's another one. But yeah, I thought these were great. And I found them for almost like less than 10 bucks a piece. Uh, but yeah, I love these. I love this. I love this little set of painted ones. I think I'm missing one or two more. Not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, there's so much Dr. Slump stuff out there that it's uh, hard for me to keep up with uh, all the stuff. You'd, you'd be amazed. Like, Dragon Ball's got a lot of stuff. Dr. Slump has a lot of stuff. And it's got. A lot of Arale stuff. So anyway, here's another little bag set that I've never opened of Keshi featuring Arale and that really awesome, like, colorful camo, semi-military, semi, like, I don't know, like, she's got that kind of tank girl look going on. And she's talking to, I think, what is it? Weird telephone invention that uh, Sinbei created. And it's got two Keshi and it's got this, like, little bookmark, like, plushy thing. It's like a little... I don't know what you call those. It's like uh, plastic with uh, soft fabric inside, and it's got a string attached to it. There's the back. And then I also found a, uh, a bigger size version of one of those, if you see what I mean. It's like it's kind of plush. It's got plush material inside, or foam. I guess foam would be the correct word. And yeah, it looks like a bookmark or so, so something. But I, I love this one. I love how it's not the same image on the front and the back. It's got both sides. And then if you look at the little dangly heart at the end, it's got uh, Gachan. Yeah, awesome. All right, so now we're going to move on to some more uh, meat and potato stuff, I guess. Uh, one last Keshi, though. But this is a, a doozy. This thing is massive. This is one of the biggest Keshi figures that I own. And these came in multiple colors. Um, so it's a rally with her hat. And... Uh, it's articulated and the things come apart like the arms and legs or the feet come off and the hat comes off yeah it's really cool and it came on a blister card and the blister card that I have is pretty ratty but this is it right here and so she came in that and her hat was over here and you had to apply it so there's a blister card here's the back and it shows you how to put her together All right, now while we're on the topic of Keshi, um, something in similar scale, smaller than that of course, the regular Keshi scale, were, uh, that were popular in the 80s and the 90s in Japan and possibly prior, were uh, finger puppet figures uh, made out of soft vinyl. So I have a little set that I found um, here. So here's uh, some main characters. Let's see, let's just get, there's Gacha. Let's get uh, Arali and Dr. Simbe here. And they're um, hollow inside. Very light. And these were cheap toys. And these were sold in bag sets, in multiples of each character. So like here, I've got the original header card with the, uh, the backing card that held the characters that it came in. And 
Um, they also released a special box set of these same figures with two of them painted. And this box set sells for far more than that bag set. Uh, this box set sells for close to $50. Um, and they're just these hollow finger puppets. But you can see it's, if you look at the Arale, it's the same sculpt, just painted. Same with Gachan and uh, Dr. Senbei, but it's a different colored vinyl. With the exception of these two characters who have been cast in the same color. So, anyway, I found this at a Gojiraya, a, sh a shop, a vintage toy shop in Koenji, and I uh, got it for a bargain. So, and it's still sealed. Awesome. All right. Um, another figure here I've got is uh, this Arale, also Safabi. This is these are all from the '80s, by the way. And I don't want to open this up because this has not been opened. And you can see here, there's like a seal that's been not been broken. But this is a stamp figure. If you look on the bottom, it's probably hard to see. But there is a image of an Arale Chan on the bottom that you can dip in ink and stamp. But I haven't opened it. And uh, this was produced by Poppy, probably around 1981 or 82. Um, as most of this stuff was produced either by Poppy or uh, other companies existing around that time that were affiliated with Toy Animation. And uh, there's not a whole lot of information on some of these. Um, here is a wind up figure. And again, almost all of these have uh, the Toei, the old Toei uh, uh, sticker on it. Let's see, this was, yeah, 1982 for this one, Japan 1982, you probably can't see it on my camera. But anyway, this is a wind-up figure. Um, the mechanism is broken, so she won't wind up anymore. But this is a pretty rare figure, and in working condition, uh, even in kind of dirty condition, this sells for quite a bit of money. But found a broken one for pretty cheap, so, you know, looks awesome, so I had to, had to grab it. Uh, here is a Sofabi Arale figure um, that is also hollow, but it's not a finger puppet. You got the Toei uh, sticker there again. Uh, I'm not sure who made this one. Uh, but it's basically, if you pull the bottom of this off, it had candy inside at some point. And I've seen a couple different types of these. Some of them set on top of these cylinders that have candy. Some of them have the candy inside like this, and some of them were on top of other items sold in boxes or sold just like this. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. And the cool thing about this one is she's in scale with one of the rare figures that I have, uh, also by uh, Poppy of Dr. Senbei. And I got this from a friend here in Japan who does flea markets occasionally named Masano-san. And uh, when he had this, I, I knew I had to get it because it was in perfectly in scale with this Arale here. And uh, they're a nice little nice little pair. And they've both got the hats that have their name on it. I wish I had a hat that just said Jeremy. That'd be weird, like many things that I discuss. Um, OK, so those are those. Uh, one thing I have here is an honorable mention. This is a bootleg uh, that I'm sure some of my fans will like because I like bootlegs. Some of my followers like bootlegs as well. Uh, shout out to Matt Hunter uh, down in Mexico. This is something he might enjoy. So this is a bootleg RLA. Not sure the origin. I'm pretty sure this was found in Japan though. And I think it was one of the prizes that if you go to like a summertime festival, a Matsuri, uh, if you would dip like a net into a like a kid's swimming pool or a, like a little fake river that's underneath of a, a booth you could pull out like super balls and like fake jewelry and toys like this so I think that this that's where this originated from could be wrong but that's what it seems like but yeah it's soft vinyl heads articulated and uh, these were sold in a few different colors but I like the pink one and after I bought the pink one, it came back. The rest were sold out, so it seemed like they're fairly popular. Okay, um, now let's talk about a couple more big items. Um, actually, before that, let me show you a couple 
non-figure related things. So yeah, going back to Dragon Ball, uh, in the early 90s, uh, some of the, the uh, Dragon Ball Z movies that came out theatric, uh, theatrically were released together with uh, Dr. Slump feature films. And both feature films ran approximately 40, 45 minutes. So all in all, an hour and a half in total. And um, so this was uh, released in 93. These were both released in 93. And it was called Toriyama Akira The World. This was number two. And it was Dragon Ball Z, uh, the Broly movie, which is, you know, big thing now, Broly, new Broly movies coming out, released together with uh, a Dr. Slump movie featuring Arale Chan. So I've actually not seen this movie. I've only seen the movies from the 80s, but I love the fact that this book has got like vintage Dragon Ball figures, Super Battle Collection advertisements, but it's got Arale featured on the front. And um, there's some stuff in here I want to show regarding Dragon Ball that I should probably hold wait, on, wait off until uh, uh, a future video. But you know, it's also got you know, big sections about Arale and the movie and what it was about. And uh, here's a nice illustration of Penguin Village, which is where Arale lives. And I have one more. Uh, this was from the Bojack movie. And you've got Arale also being released at the same time. And she's got boxing gear on. Cool. And on the back, you got Yu Yu Hakusho for fans of that series. OK. Um, I'm going to show you one modern toy that I really love because it's uh, it's got a vintage appeal and it was produced by a uh, software maker called Dune and according to this it was sculpted in 2013 but I was not made aware of this until recently and I like the card the cards for this on the uh, on the bag that they put it out it says 2018 so maybe it's a reissue but or maybe they just have been holding on to the mold for that long well anyway Dune put out these uh, Arale Safabi figures which I love I love them I love the way they look they look super vintage and awesome and uh, they, they put them out in lots of different colors but this is the one that I grabbed and they're at about like a 60 to 70 dollar price point and uh, yeah it's like it's weighty it doesn't feel cheap I love the I love the different color variants but yeah the, the red blue and yellow was my favorite so I had to grab this, even though I don't really collect modern stuff. Uh, she's got articulated arms. Her waist moves to some degree. But yeah, just something you know I had to get that I think even vintage collectors would appreciate because it's not a fucking vinyl pop. All right, now here's the, the main item of the evening. Um, this is the maybe third O'Reilly figure that I bought. But this is the very first Arale figure that I ever saw, ever. Because after I moved to Japan in 2005, my wife had this figure in her collection and she doesn't even collect things. This was something she's had from her childhood that was on display at her, um, her family's house before we got married that I saw, recognized, and didn't really think much of it. Years pass, I get into toy collecting a bit more, I get into Dragon Ball collecting a bit more, and then I get into collecting Dr. Slump. I ask her, where's that Arale thing you used to have, that vintage Arale thing? And she's like, oh, my, my family members threw it away. I look it up, it's worth like $300, loose. <laughs> so um, I went on a quest to try to find it on some Japanese auction sites found one. I'm not going to disclose how much I paid for it. I won the auction. I was the only bidder. You know, you do the math. But here it is. This is the large size Poppy uh, Arale doll. The original. Massive. Amazing Arale figure. This was made by Poppy. Um... I also believe around 1981, 82. So my wife would have been just a couple years old when this came out, and it was probably bought for her as something to just, you know, cuddle with. But hers was a bit old and worn. I found this one. This one was like pristine. It looks like no one had ever touched it before. It's missing the box, but it's missing nothing else. 
and uh, it was just in such incredible condition. I couldn't believe that I got it for the price that I got it for. Anyway, her hat comes off. She's got yarn for hair. She looks like a Muppet to some degree. This hat would fit a small child. <laughs> this thing's the size of a small child. She's got real denim overalls with real metal buttons. Uh, she's got vinyl shoes, vinyl hands, vinyl face, but it's super cute. And um, yeah, I think this is the masterpiece of my collection. She originally came in a box. I don't have the box for it, but I'm happy to have her. Normally she sits, uh, she, she shits, <laughs> she sits up in the corner, um, you know, looking over my room. Some kids might think she's a bit creepy though. I don't know, but you know, better than a good guy doll. You know what I mean? But could you imagine a, a good guy doll as strong as a Raleigh? Good Lord, It'd be the end of the world. All right. That's the end of my collection thus far. As I mentioned before, you know, I'm missing some stuff that I used to have uh, because I either it was missing stuff and I wanted to trade it off for something else and get a completed version later. But yeah, that's it for my Raleigh collection. That's what have I what I've amassed mostly for the past year. Um, this stuff is hard to find even in Japan. Although you can find lots of new Arali stuff, uh, but don't let that obscurity discourage you. Um, I'm pretty sure you could find this finger puppet set on eBay from a Japanese seller for a uh, pretty decent price. Um, and I'm always selling Arali stuff, so if you follow me on Instagram, always check what I'm putting up for sale. Um, yeah because you could be one of the people that owns maybe something that I decide to trade off in the future. But that's it. That's it for my Raleigh collection. Uh, I apologize for the, uh, again, the lighting. It's nighttime, and I didn't think I had to put that light up there. And, uh, you know, the uncut live stream style of this video. But I hope you enjoyed seeing this uh, collection. It was one of the most requested uh, things that I post. But I have lots of other things I want to post. Uh, in the future and hopefully I can do that soon. Until then Ho oh, yo 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 That was fucked up man. You don't even know what that means. How do they how do they even translate that in English? How do they translate that in English? I'm trying to remember how they did that in Dragon Ball Super when they when because that's Arale's trade trademark thing. She like goes ho oh, yo 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 and uncha and by the way uncha is a abbreviation of konichiwa Ho oh, yo yo yo. It's just gibberish. I apologize. All right, I'm gonna go find something to drink now. Oh, that's the window. <laughs>